This is the Samsung Galaxy Gear watch. This is the first smartwatch attempt by Samsung following the popular Pebble smartwatch released earlier this year, stirring up some excitement for wearables. And Sony has already released a few smartwatches with minimal adoption worldwide. Wearables seem to be the next big thing, but with this $300 price tag, is it really worth buying? Let's find out in the full review. The Galaxy Gear features a 1.63 inch 320x320 320 color AMOLED display and is surprisingly easy to see in the sunlight. And the display is responsive, sharp, and it's beautiful. The band is made of a rubber material and you would think it would feel cheap, but it doesn't. So let me take it off to show you the clasp mechanism. And there are pogo pins on the back and I'll show you what that does later. Now there are holes there to adjust the size of the band as you need to and the process is very easy to do and you just fold it back and snap it into place and it's as easy as that. The right side features a fairly tactile power button and a microphone and on the left side features another microphone and nothing else. On the band you will find a 1.9 megapixel camera that is capable of 720p video and still pictures with autofocus. Now the whole thing is powered by an 800 megahertz single core Exynos processor with 512 megabytes of RAM and the watch is very comfortable to wear and is not that bulky on the arm. It's not heavy and I got used to it being on my arm in just a few days. It never came loose or fell off and the build quality is excellent. That class mechanism is very nice and it does not fall off. So overall I'm impressed with the build quality of the Samsung Galaxy Gear watch. Remember those pogo pins on the back? Well those are there for this interesting cradle that comes packaged with the Galaxy Gear. I'm presuming this was done to cut the bulk of the watch itself and it works very well. Just line up the connection points and close the cradle and that's it. The cradle is enclosed in this leather type material and the USB charging connection is on the back which I will show you in just a second but it feels premium when you put it on. It charges very fast since it only has a 315 milliamp battery but I guess you can wear it this way but I don't think you would really want to but that USB connection is there right on the back and it works very well. The downside of this watch is that right now you have to have the Galaxy Note 3 to make this watch work. The Galaxy S4 and the Note 2 will get support in the future but it runs off of Bluetooth 4.0 low energy so Samsung's other phones need an update to talk to the gear. Too bad it does not have support for other Android devices and that was a big disappointment for me. Now when you tap the cradle to the back of the phone via NFC it downloads the gear manager app and that is where you will control most of the functions and apps on your gear. This is where you can dig into your settings further and download new apps. This is where you can auto transfer and find your gear or note if they are separated, control what apps give you notifications, wake the watch up with movement and set a double press on the power button for app launch. I have it set to launch the pedometer but you can have it set to whatever that you want to. Now watch faces are important on a watch, right? Well there are plenty of them here and you can change them from analog to digital and change the color of the text or time. I like the shortcut face where you can set three shortcuts on the bottom to launch any three apps you want and you can go right into the settings and just pick whatever three that you want to. So I can launch Twitter or the camera or whatever that I want from this face. So this is my favorite watch face on the Galaxy Gear. The Gear apps come from the Samsung App Store and not the Google Play Store. So there aren't too many apps right now but there is a variety of social, fitness and watch faces that you can download. I'm hoping to see a lot more apps show up with greater adoption but for now they're definitely limited. The interface is very basic. You can swipe left or right and a single tap will launch that app. So you can swipe from left or right on a contact to call them or send a text message like you would do on TouchWiz devices. A swipe down acts as a back gesture and navigating through your apps is fairly easy. The gear features timers and pedometers and other fitness related functions that sync with S Health so that is a bonus for health conscious users that are thinking about picking one up. 
Now you don't have to open your Note 3 to change your watch face since it's right in the settings here so that is a nice touch. And you can select from a few notification and vibration settings from the watch and the display is bright enough to see in direct sunlight but there is also a outdoor mode to assist with better viewing by cranking up that brightness. So there are a few apps here, there is S-Voice, there's S-Memo, there's a gallery, and there's a media controller that works fairly well. I have a YouTube video playing here and I can control the volume and I can also pause with the gear. So this can be interesting for people that consume a lot of media, maybe that listen to a lot of music. You can control the playback right from your Galaxy Gear watch. Swiping up from the bottom will launch a dialer and it's a very simple dialer. Making phone calls is a simple process manually or you can just find a contact and just tap on that to make a phone call. The microphone is on the bottom where the clasp is so it can make talking on the phone a little awkward looking. The microphone can pick up without you talking this way but for the best clarity and volume on the opposite side you will need to talk into that microphone. It is a fairly weak speaker, so making calls in a noisy environment, that's very difficult. So either way, you will look like you're talking into your hand, or you will look like you're walking around trying to take a nap at the same time. But for those boring conversations, you're one gesture ahead for falling asleep. If you swipe left from the watch face, you will get to your notifications, and that's where your, all your notifications live. And I have a text message right here, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. And oops, there comes a notification from YouTube and that's how notifications show up when you get them. Just tap on it and expand the email and that's pretty convenient. But some notifications like Google Plus cannot even be seen on the watch and that's just a letdown. And the same goes for MMS. It just tells you it's there and you have to expand it on the actual device itself. So just hit show on device and it will unlock your phone and go straight to that notification. You can respond to a text message via S-Voice on the Galaxy Gear, but sometimes it can be a little frustrating and it's kind of slow, but here's an example of when it works well. What's your message? I am still filming right now. I will text you back later. Here is your message. Ready to send it. Send it. Sending message. Okay, I sent it. What's the weather like today? Today it's 78 degrees with just a few clouds in the sky. So S-Voice works fairly well and you can set appointments and other functions on the gear. But what if you want to search for directions or places? This is the message that you will get. Where is the nearest Italian restaurant? The requested function is not supported. Please check the help. So let's talk about the 1.9 megapixel camera on the Galaxy Gear and the camera is launched by a simple swipe down gesture and it's really easy to get to and you don't have a whole lot of controls on this camera but that's pretty much expected I mean this is a watch right so if you hit the settings on the top right corner you can change the focus mode and you can also change the size of the photo from two different aspect ratios so some people thought that you couldn't change the aspect ratio of the photos but you can and there's also a sound and shot feature that people have saw on the actual Galaxy devices themselves where you can record some audio with a shot. But having the gear on your wrist can make you feel a little bit James Bondish and uh, maybe a little bit stealthy. So you may find yourself in this situation. Not much of a secret if you make noise while you take the shot. All jokes aside, the photo quality is exactly what you would expect from a 1.9 megapixel camera. It will work for quick everyday photos, but don't expect the quality to be stellar. 
And the 720p recording is nothing astonishing, but that's expected as well. It'll work for quick 15 second video capture that you're limited to, but it's nice having this kind of power on your wrist though. Now that I've gone over the gear, let me tell you some of the things that I don't like about it, and then we'll finish with a conclusion. I found that third party apps to hang up on me from time to time, like this one. And the core apps usually have no problems with notifications, but I notice apps like QuickTweet here have spotty notifications. Sometimes I get them and sometimes I don't. And I also don't like the fact when notifications show up right here, it doesn't matter what you're doing on the gear itself, it just intrusively shows up. So I would like to see a nicer notification system when you're using the gear. And also you have to use the Samsung email app to get the email, so no direct Gmail notifications. So you can see that this has happened to me more than once and it just locks up and there's nothing I can do about it. So if you're like me and have to type a lot, then you may have problems with this watch. The clasp part on the bottom is fairly bulky and it does get in the way when you're trying to rest your wrist on a flat surface like I'm doing here on the MacBook Pro. Now it's not that you can't type with this watch on, but you will notice it on there. Have you guys had any problems with this? Let me know in the comment section below, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. It's not the end of the world though, so don't let this stop you from buying this watch. The selection is expected and more of a gripe than a dislike, but the apps and functionality are limited at this time. Even though it is convenient, I believe it'll need a few revisions to make this watch a knockout. And the $300 price tag is also a huge obstacle. And also the fact that it just doesn't work on every Android device out there, like the smartwatch does from Sony, that's kind of a letdown too. So you have to have a Samsung device here to make it work, and I think that is a problem for a lot of people that want to buy this device and for people that own HTC, Sony, or Nexus devices. Overall, it's a decent experience. It's mostly responsive, has all-day battery life, heck, even two days if you're conservative on it, and it has a great color AMOLED display with a convenient camera. It is a step in the right direction for wearable devices, but it's inconsistent third-party apps and limited functionality at this time, it makes it a really hard sell. I would recommend playing with it in the store before you purchase, but if you want a high-tech watch and have a Galaxy Note 3 and $300, then go ahead and give it a try. You may like it. So let me know what you think about the Samsung Galaxy Gear watch. Are you guys getting one? Let me know in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review for it helps the channel out a ton. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't for more videos like this and follow me on Twitter at SuperScientific and I will see you guys in the next one and thanks for watching.